I'm doing more um, work with this volumetric texture I came up with yesterday. And now I'm integrating it with um, Niagara. And now we're starting to get into some usable uh, some usable assets here. And you can kind of see what we got going on. The other fun thing is I have material instance and I've updated a bunch of stuff so that I can actually do things like this. Lower the brightness exponentially or increase it. Also do this. Can also change the scaling of different parts of it. You can see that the scaling is getting smaller as this number gets bigger. But right here it's pretty good. I can also change the scaling of the turbulence. If I make it smaller, you get bigger turbulence. If I make it bigger, you get smaller turbulence. And there we go. Pretty cool. Um, there was another thing I was going to do to this material, actually. I just didn't get to. So, you have this. I want the user to be able to control whether or not I'm using the one minus of the alpha or the regular alpha. So what I'll do is I'll put this here, this here, scalar parameter, and we'll call this warp one minus alpha. Okay. And then the results of this can go here and here. Perfect. Now I can come back over here to our instance. That's interesting. Get some interesting effects here. Five. Five. Zero. Just some useful randomization parameters. Point seven. Point three. Isn't there something else I was going to do in here? So this is getting pretty close to good. Um, as far as like the nebula texture itself used in the particle system. <clears throat> so next thing I want to do is be able to sample a static mesh for the particle spawn here and jitter it. Um, right now I'm using sphere plus jitter. to get kind of an amorphous shape, which actually works pretty good. Uh, assuming
All right, save that. Come back out here and look at our procedural nebula. So next, I have to do some research. I want to know. Part the lock, okay? Let's just go to content drawer, put that in here, and. Sample status, static mesh, initialize particle, get rid of the sphere location, get rid of the jitter for now. Sample static mesh. Looking for something distinctive so I can tell if it's working or not. change the size of the sprites okay just click in here in uniform i want to change the size to one and you no know, you can see it is on on or a static mesh and it If we increase this amount like 10,000, we can see it clearly. It's good. Uh, let's do this real quick. is perfectly circular. Alright, 
What we want, we took. Okay, let's just go to content drawer, put it in here and here. And I want to change the size of the sprites, okay? Just click in here in uniform. I want to change the size to one, and you now you can see it is on on or a static mesh. And if we increase this amount like ten thousand, you can see it clearly. It's beautiful, right? But we want we don't want to do that this way. Because I want to call it the box. So please go meet hello because we want to spawn a lot of particle. I want to go to property and change it to CPU so we can create a lot of part. Aha. Aha. I was using the simulation position, that's why. Okay. Let me see. Unset, unset. Uh, initialize particle uniform sprite size. 250. 250. properties. I don't need 5,000 of these anymore. Hmm. Interesting. So then static mesh. Niagara spawn wants to live forever particles. So. 
So set lifetime to zero. Our submission is spawn one.
All right, now I need to make Do a big Taurus. How do I get it? <laughs> it's still emitting.
stop, 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 stop. <coughs> That's why. There we go. Uh, U5, UE5, stop, fade in, this What happens? All right, that's that's better. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Let's see. So I think I'm going to remove the concept of sphere mask distortion altogether. 
Oh, my controls are flipped. That's wonderful. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to go in here. It's just like puffy clouds. Be up at 2.5. 2. Okay. So now I need to build a big old static mesh.
Get some nice vapor wave clouds. So next thing I'm going to need is just like a big static mesh. First of all, I want to in quick click the cube and delete it. And we'll hit Shift A, add a curvature, a curve, Bezier curve. And we'll hit, um, we'll make sure that our curve is selected. And we'll go to our object properties panel here and go to geometry and extrude it. Now we can see we have hold up. We have a short ribbon that we can work on and extrude. So first of all, I want to increase the resolution of our ribbon. And I'll do that in the resolution preview. Click this and hit 30 and enter. I'll click my ribbon and I hit tab. So to extrude your ribbon, press E to extrude. And that's how you make the ribbon longer. Make sure to work from both the top view, the side view, 
and the front view when doing this. So you get more of a three-dimensional looking ribbon. I'm just gonna, going to um, move these anchor points around so I get a more more of a contour in my in my ribbon here. So this is a very very quick way to make a ribbon. I will set up a camera quickly. Uh, I'll make this a bit longer first. Press seven and D to extrude. Rotate. Just make a squiggly line like this. If you want the ribbon to merge into one another, just press the last vertice on both ends and hit F and you'll fill in and you have this like this belt almost or this rope I'd rather. Um, so hit front view and we'll just hit G to grab and pull our ribbon up and downwards. Oh, see that. Something like that. That's a good starting point. Also, if you want to twist individual points you can just press Ctrl T and you'll rotate only the one point at a time because sometimes when you move or rotate one part of the of the ribbon, the whole ribbon will change. So sometimes you have to use Ctrl T to twist the ribbon to make it look or make it fit to your scene. So I'm happy with this, this ribbon I got here. So I'm just gonna set up a quick scene, grab my camera, Alt-R, RX90, enter, click the move button here, drag that down, drag it to the left. Now I'm just gonna duplicate my window. It's zero on the side. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could probably just do this in Unreal 2, right? Uh, VMET. Add object shapes uh, modeling. Perspective top.
there nice now this guy comes here back to the Niagara system static mesh location static mesh It does explain why it's behaving this way. Turn the camera speed up. Camera speed up. Time to burn one. <coughs> and then restart. Close this. Don't save. Thank 
Mesh. Um, form mesh. And then user parameters, we can set this here. Uh, diamond save downsize back to our nebula instance here turbulence kill offset turbulence strength I like it too So now let's just try some basic stuff. Um, select mode, I'm gonna add a shape. I'm gonna add a cylinder. I'm going to create a rod like so. Browse to asset. Duplicate the cylinder. This, this guy. How do I change the scale? Build settings, build scale, scale. There it is. And then I messed up my material somehow. It's like that. Uh, 
one measure opacity three um, turbulence scale offset down to like a two turbulence strength to like a five save it all and then back into the Nyakara system spawn burst is instant user parameter particle count 500 Here we go. I'll be right back. Okay, and then real quick, let's just go back over here, go here, do maybe two here, save it, downsize it, yeah. sparsifies it a little bit. Okay, so how do I make a static mesh that like kind of snakes around? Uh, perspective, top. The game dev outpost. In this video, Let's we're going to do some research. Skeletal meshes and surfaces in Unreal 4. 
For this video, we're going to use this fancy chest that I made. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my effects folder, I'm going to right click, go to effects, and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty template. I'm going to name it any, and then whatever you want. And then we'll open it up. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to spawn something. So, in emitter update, we're going to add a spawn rate. We're going to set that to something crazy like a thousand and we'll save it so we can compile. And then my emitter state, I'm going to set this to self just so you can see that I'm leaving the loop behavior to infinite. And then in my initialized particle, I'm going to make the spray size mode to uniform. And then I'm going to make these a lot smaller to something like 0.1. And I'll save again so it can compile. Now, under particle spawn, we want to click on plus, and we're looking for location. And in here, you're going to see skeletal mesh location. And when you click on that, you're going to get a warning. And basically, it's just saying, hey, you don't have a mesh in here yet. You have nothing assigned. So <laughs> mesh, I'm going to click on a drop down, and I'm going to add my skeleton. In this case, it's SK chess underscore one. And then I'm going to save it. Now, it's not that a lot of these properties aren't worth noting. But the main thing right now to take note of are the mesh sampling type and the bone sampling method. So under mesh sampling type, if we leave this at skeleton, it's just going to sample your bones. But if we click on that drop down, we have an option to choose surface triangles or surface vertices. In my case, I'm just going to do surface triangles. So there's a little more variance. And I'm going to leave this at random. And I'll hit save. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see it. Right away, you can see that my particles are spawning on the skeletal mesh's surface. If we play this, you can see that they're spawning randomly. Now, the next question you might ask is, how do we get our particle system to line up with our skeletal mesh and its animations? And it turns out that that's built in by default with the skeletal mesh location. But we have to create a blueprint. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to close out this. And I'm going to create, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create an Niagara system. And I'm going to name this correctly, just so it says an S at the beginning. And now I'm going to create my blueprint. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to blueprint class, and I want an actor for now. I'm going to name this BP, and then whatever you want to name. And then I'm going to open it up. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to add our skeletal mesh. And so I can get rid of that default C root. I'm going to drag and drop that straight on top of it. And then over in our details panel, under mesh, we'll have skeletal mesh. And next thing we want to add our skeleton. I'm going to add my SK chest. Here it is. Give me ideas. Uh, that little truck. All right, so I want. Um, I'm gonna open up Blender. Oh, I already had one. Oops. Uh, I guess not. Uh, Blender. Uh huh. This is the one I remember doing. We delete this, we create Taurus. We want eight. Thirty-two. All right, there we go. Actually, it doesn't matter too much, but I might do. We want um, my minor radius. I bring that up a bit. Um, actually, no. We'll just look. We can keep it default. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I won't peek inside though. So I'm gonna go inside of it and just have a look at. 
what the size of things. Yeah, this should be fun. This is gonna be our wormhole, and we're gonna have it kind of just travel in a loop, um, and we're gonna stick our camera inside of it. So let's go ahead and get set up. I'm gonna hit uh, Shift A, create a new camera. I'm gonna hit zero on my number pad to jump into it, or you can also just click the little camera button. I'm gonna grab this little dropout menu with that little, uh, that little triangle icon. You can also, well, I'll just turn on my screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna go to view, the view tab, and I'm gonna click on lock camera to view, and I will zoom out and come around and position my camera inside the space here. And just, just something like this, I think. Now, I'm going to click on my camera, and then I'm gonna come down here to the camera tab that appears, and I'm gonna increase my focal length. I'm gonna come out to like 22, something like that. That'll just really expand our view. I'll also go to viewport display and I'll take passport two and I'll just turn that up so I can just focus on what my render is gonna look like. I'll unclick camera to view and I'll zoom in like this. I'm gonna select my torus. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. And I'm gonna to come to modifiers and the little wrench tab and I'm gonna say, let's grab a subdivision surface. I'll pop it up to two, and then I'm gonna grab a displacement modifier. Where are you? Displacement, there. Dis displacement. I've done this one before, so. There it is. I'm going to click on new to create a new texture, and then I'm going to click on this little button to jump over to my texture tab. Also, I'll rename the texture, I'll call it uh, wormhole. And I'm going to use not an image or movie, I'm going to click the type here, and we're going to go to a. Oh, what can we do? Just, let's, just, let's just go with clouds. Uh, Um, we'll keep these settings for now. I'll come back over to my wrench. You can see here it says wormhole because it's the name of the texture that we're using. Um, and I'm going to take my strength down. I'm going to hold down shift and drag. And holding down shift. will decrease the amount of displacement. 
I'm gonna click on new to create a new texture, and then I'm gonna click on this little button to jump over to my texture tab. Yep. Also, I'll rename the texture, I'll call it uh, wormhole. And I'm gonna use not an image or movie, I'm gonna click the type here, and we're gonna go to a, oh, what can we do? We can just, let's, just, let's just go to the clouds. Um, we'll keep these settings from now. I'll come back over to my wrench. You can see here it says wormhole because it's the name of the texture that we're using. Um, and I'm going to take my strength down. I'm going to hold down shift in drag. And holding down shift will decrease the amount, uh, or the speed at which I, I drag things down. So, yeah, just kind of pull this down a little bit. Um, and then I think I'll jump back over to my texture and I'll make it a bit bigger. So hold on shift, I keep dragging up, maybe like 1.08 and back up to here and increase the strength a little bit like that. I'm just creating some irregularity in the surface of our torus. What I want to do is where it says coordinates right now, they're set to local, right? So if you look here, if I rotate my torus, right, it should um, rotate my torus on the Z, it's going to travel around our camera and we're going to have a few issues here. Let's find one of those moments where we click through so we can get our camera position a little bit better. Pipe that in like this. I might rotate over a touch. All right, let's see if that works a little better. Yeah, there we go. So you can see how it looks kind of cool. All right, so now the next part of this effect is that we need to really kind of figure out uh, the shader because a lot of this is going to be driven by the shader. Um, so let me on take camera to view and I will select my torus object. I'll go ahead and rename it wormhole. Let's drag here. We'll go down to the bottom corner. We'll click and drag to make two windows. I'll come up here and I'll grab my shader editor and uh, I'm gonna switch from object to world. And I'm gonna pop out here outside of the wormhole and I'll switch to render view. Now I'm rendering with Eevee at the moment and I'll turn on bloom and screen space reflections and I'll open up screen space reflections and I'll turn on refraction. Okay, we're gonna see if we can do some refraction to get a cool effect. In our world shader, uh, I'm gonna make some stars. So we'll just do the classic noise texture into a color ramp. So we'll take the factor into the factor, color into the color of our background shader. And then we're gonna take our scale up to 600 and then we're gonna smash this right down and bring this one up and that will create a bunch of stars out there. Um, now, if I jump back into my camera and I select my, my wormhole, go to my object shader, click new to create a new shader for this guy. All right, now I wanna use refraction to basically make this wormhole transparent and cause it to refract the stars. Surface, I'm going to take not too much because I don't want it to feel like a drop it in and uh, texture coordinate node, duplicate it, take. Now I don't wanna get sections like this where it's too huge. So I'm gonna turn the scale down a bit more and bring this around. And you can animate this stuff too. So it could also give you some cool effects. Bring the detail down a little bit, maybe bring up a little bit of, I'm gonna pop up gold uh, shader. So I'm gonna grab, but, the effect here is that uh, the stars are um, traveling at a slightly slower rate than the surrounding wormhole. Now, another cool thing we could try and do is take a texture coordinate node and a mapping node, and we could drop, uh, let's drop the generated onto the vector and the vector into the vector. And let's see what happens if we rotate the stars. I'm gonna hold down shift so I can see the effect. I don't know if this is going to work, but just seeing. Yeah, so rotating the stars. I don't know if you can see it with YouTube compression, but it's basically. All right, how do I apply these to the object? Uh, blender apply. Control A. Um, I 
You're gonna blunder around in blunder. No, where? This. I want it. Transforms. Now, index to this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello, my friends. So, today's big cameras from my outliner. I'm then going to press A to select everything. I'm going to go to File, Export, FBX, and then... Oh, export, FBX. Press this cog to open my settings. I'm then going to go to path mode and change this to copy and then hit this icon here. Here, this will enable all textures from my scene will be embedded into my FBX file. Then I'm going to limit it and click selected objects only. I'm going to press object types, enable mesh only. I'm going to scroll down, open up geometry, Go to smoothing and check. Eject to face. Then I'm going to rename it and press export FBX. Okay. thing
right, so here is a for instance. Um, Okay, I need to go fast, fast. We're getting big now. And then for this, <laughs> particle size has to be an input into the Ni Niagara system. Yep, yep. We make the initialized particle random uniform. All right, so it's close. All right, so now I need um, should I just do a vector particle count particle min size max size jitter plus it plus the mesh so. Right, 
put max spray size. And then we go here, we go here. This is 1200 for now. We'll make this 2000. Make this 2000 just for now. Make this 300. And then connect everything up. here All right, and now, fix this. Okay, save this. Save all. Okay, now, um, that, no, oh, I'm still on this, shit. Okay, so I got my, got my little donut object imported in here. Um, now, Initialize particle, random uniform, it's going to get, hold on, let me make sure I'm reading these right, yes, alright, max sprite size here, min sprite size here, Particle count is already rigged up. Jitter amount. Rig this up. Jitter, what happens?
we go. Now we have a different one, at least different in color. I have to figure out how to procedurally generate the mesh. And I have to also figure out why it's flipping. Don't like that. So. I mean, this, I feel like this works. Like, I can obviously tone down some of the aspects of it, but... I could take this Niagara system now, since it's... What if I did like, I can make a flat ring of gas. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. save everything. It's as good as it's been. Uh, So now, I need to figure out a way to procedurally build an object that has like, <clears throat> it's like a goopy, a goopy object that I can then use as a static mesh for this. And then I can truly like generate like random ass different patterns, different types of nebulas just with numbers. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Hmm. So. Jitter amount, sprite size, particle count. Um, wonder what ribbons would look like. I have a good thing going here though, I'm not going to fuck with it too much. Um, this is also on the GPU, which is great. And it's working on the GPU, so... This is... This is good. This... Alright. look like in actual gameplay.
So, what didn't what happened to off stream is I took the texture that I've been working on all day with the uh, volumetric noise, and I built a Niagara particle system uh, using that. And that looks like this. If I do wireframe, comes obvious what's happening. We have a bunch of billboards, and they're all using the texture that, um, like, is based on its position in world space. Uh, and then I apply these to the surface of a past in mesh or the default mesh, mesh, which right now is a ring, uh, like a lumpy ring. And with this, I should be able to make like any kind of different structure. I just have to figure out how to start procedurally generating these mesh objects next which is going to be its own set of challenges but this is really cool there's still work to be done on it I, I don't know why it's flickering um, it may just be a Niagara thing because it doesn't seem to do that out here, right? It's probably just the Niagara editor like running through a loop. Which makes sense. This is fucking sick. Actually, this is a pretty good stopping point. So, I have to figure out how to make objects some like, some like lumpy, <sighs> lumpy, strandy meshes procedurally. And then I can generate a mesh in a blueprint with random numbers and then I can generate everything else and have it get its own kind of custom volumetric entries in the system it's fucking cool And then, like, you would just... I wonder if I can set the same speed. So if you were, like, flying at spaceship speed, it would be something like... More akin to this. So, and then we have the ability to just play with the texture, like, in real time, which is sick. Uh, so, I pull this up. Maybe I want a bit more turbulence. say I want even more than that it 
There's definitely like some artifact thing and such that goes on, but like honestly, this is I think this is like almost good enough to use. It just needs. I wonder if I could sell this. <laughs> and it seems to like be pretty, pretty lightweight computationally. Like it's not having a hard time rendering this. I could probably increase the number of particles um, escape like this is just a 300 particles what about with 1200 Okay, that is kind of chugging. Oh, I'm moving at one speed. Project settings, let's turn Bloom off. I think they got like little strands and shit. for editing here.
Okay. Um, do, 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 do. So we've got the particle system, the nebula instance. I need. I need to look up some stuff now. I need to go learn more things. I have to figure out how to. Okay, so. this now. Nebula. So I can now take a blueprint to combine all this together to where I can spawn these with different shapes. I have to, the, the next thing I have to learn about though is randomly, I need to randomly be able to duplicate what I just did in Blender. Except for even more randomly, I think. So I don't want just like a ring, obviously. I want different shapes. The other cool thing is this. You move it and you get a different nebula. If we were to spin it. be able to fuck with the luminosity of parts of it and that's gonna mean things like have parts of it glowing more brightly than it already was. Looks 
now. Obviously, that's too much. That's actually kind of nice. toggle different warps on the colors too. Um, yes, yes indeed. Because right now we have two colors that we warp between. Lots of little ways to tweak it and get different results is what we're after. So, so do you be able to, uh, this? Okay, so what's the difference here? can I do? I would like to have the sprites not just be all circle falloffs. If I could figure out a way to kind of smear it but still have a transparent fall off, that would be help helpful. Um, let me look that up. Uh, Okay. 
I mean, I guess at this point I could go back here. right here. And we could just take this Square is good. Um, Dithered wad transitions here. Okay, so I gotta figure out a way. This would be good if it like could constrain itself inside the bounds of the sprite. This is what I really want is like the sprites to be randomly generated like this. Um, I do. Regular sprite masks three five. Could I hang on, hang on, hang on. I got another idea. Okay, okay, okay. So what if I Subtract 
multiply by 2, centered on negative numbers. Now, okay, we're not pushing it down into the right anymore. So I think we might actually be able to make this work. Radius comes down. No, no, no. This is point five. Radius comes down. Three. Two. randomizes each time. I have to arbitrarily scroll the thing that does it does actually remove a lot of the kind of bulbousness. All right, all right. So now, what do we want to do here? I need to... This is going to be based on world position, yeah? I think so. I think that might have actually cracked it. And Clouds on clouds on clouds on clouds. Maybe I got it. Maybe. Um, so, yeah. Save it. Save everything.
Okay, he really doesn't like that. Usually it's not under this. It might even go as low as this sometimes, but... Where's the lowest that I actually get? I got it there. Uh, four? Almost? No, no. Oh. All right, this is about as low as it'll go and still render.
this is cool. Alright, uh, let's see. Radius and hardness are not needed. That's here. Disconnect these unnecessary. Thank you. 
All right, and I think there's some material settings that I'm missing. I got to figure out. Um, massive object below in A5. Maybe additive. I'm always a little scared when I say this. It's just like, oh shit, what if I forget what I did? I think there's no like negative I think there's no dark parts of it right I'm gonna need to change it while looking at it all right so that's additive and this is translucent to do that one thing. Okay, so So what's the difference between additive like this? Translucent like this. Aside from the fact that it's a little darker and additive didn't have the artifacts. So it's flickering. It's not flickering. It's just a little brighter. <sighs> I 
think there's a clear winner here with that. Not two sided. How much does that matter? I think they're billboards, so it would shouldn't really matter. Honestly can't tell the difference with that, so I turn it off. Oh, shit. <laughs> what happens if I do this? Just out of curiosity. Now that it's on, shouldn't do anything though, because it's on billboards. Yeah, it's on billboards, not on the objects, so it's not going to actually do anything. Okay. No need for this. Save it one more time. I also want to check. Alright, where's my. So copy paste spin copy paste spin 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 spin. The particles are just much better.
This is doing pretty good, actually. Um, okay. So, anything else left in that I need settings for on this thing? I don't think this is actually it. And then over here, any other settings that I'm missing? I feel like that makes sense. It's a gas. It shouldn't be shiny, right? Didn't do anything, but I think it might actually be faster to do it that way. Okay. Can't really tell if it did anything. That does appear to have done something. What do you think? I do believe, okay, these two passed the check. So, now the particle system, I think the particle system is good. So, now, now I'm gonna probably have to take a break and do some research, because I'm not sure where to start with the procedural geometry that I'm gonna need for this. end it here uh, next up I want to make a blueprint that will create some procedural geometry to apply this particle system to 
and see if I can get something that will just generate generate me some nice little nebulas randomly. This is cool. Oh yeah, do you like it? So I've been working on the past couple days is this procedural nebula volumetric. You can uh, you can take this here and change all kinds of stuff and get dra dramatically different results. And so it has like a bunch of tunable parameters here and it's applying to, so I went and I made this kind of lumpy torus to serve as the base object. Uh, but it will apply the particles randomly along the surface of whatever object you feed it. So the next thing I want to do is come up with a way to generate these kind of lumpy shapes in like kind of nebula patterns, but do it procedurally. And then I would be able to make a blueprint class that would generate a few meshes and then apply some random settings along with that, uh, that particle effect to them and get things that aren't just like a ring, but like random shapes and such. Probably. I don't fucking know anything about it yet. I haven't done any research. I'm going to be looking into that over the next couple of days, probably. Um, you can also, let's see what else. Randomize the shape keys. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I will check that out for sure. Um, but yeah, so this texture is based on 3D noise. So it's like, it's world position dependent. So when you got your particle system, your mesh you want the particles on the surface of, what colors you want, and the other settings and such, you just put this wherever and you get like pretty consistently different um, effects, which is really good for proc gen, right? It's um, gonna be good for like skybox skyboxes and uh, volumetrics around stars because it's fully traversable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could you could animate it like that too, um, for sure. Um, but so the idea here is that this is not necessarily just like a skybox component. Like you could have a ring of gas around a star you did with this, or potentially even like a ring around a planet. Potentially could be done like this. And uh, right now, I just have the material that I made in the particle system but I'm going to be looking at like the ability to like generate some meshes procedurally to feed to all that and then put it all in a blueprint and then just expose all the various parameters on how you like fuck around with the different attributes of it from that blueprint and then at that point I won't have to like manually manipulate the anything i just feed it like a seed number basically that's my goal anyway um 
But this is like more like I said, I bash my head on this um, 3D volumetric stuff for a while. And there was one um, realization, or actually it's something I saw that kind of just caused an epiphany for me um, of actually making it look good. And that was that uh, the idea of distortion. So, <clears throat> have my world position here, which goes into my texture um, eventually, my 3D texture. But what I'm doing is I'm using this world position, I'm multiplying it with an offset to change, this changes like the scale of everything. And then uh, I'm generating another set of noise here using the same position after the offset. I generate another noise and you see like turbulence offset, turbulence strength. Finally, you scale that by the strength that you want the turbulence to apply to the first noise texture. And then you go in to, this would be equivalent to like the UVs, except for it's 3D. And you take this noise and you just add it um, to the world position before you feed it in here. And what that does is it causes, as it's reading like the pixels, it you don't just get the underlying noise pattern because it's like really easy to see like the flaws in the underlying noise pattern, but you get that noise pattern that's been like pushed around by the other noise pattern. And that is what lets you get things like these little like tendrils reaching out and like all this kind of distortion and such in here that looks really good um comes from that distortion i wasn't able to get that until i realized that you could do that kind of manipulation of the uvs before you use them to sample uh and i've got like various things so like here's the the particle system settings it's between 500 and 3000 sized billboards I can do more particles and it gets more solid, more prominent. Um, here, I'll show you. It's uh, it's one of the built-in procedural noise nodes. So I use, I did all this with these two noise nodes. Um, this one's a 3D Perlin gradient. And this one is a 2D, uh, just whatever you want. I'm using gradient here, but I might mess around with the type here. Um, oh, sorry. It's vector noise. This is the 3D one. And just the noise node for the 2D that I'm using for the distortion. And so I'm using this to, no, no, no. these are just um, base functions inside the material. It's UE5. And this is all native UE5 stuff. I haven't used any add-ons for this. Um, and what this is gonna do is you're gonna sample this noise based on the pixels location and world position, except you're gonna slide that pixels location around a little bit with the distortion randomly with another noise pattern before you sample it out of the 3D noise. And that's what causes like it to like push it into like strands and things like that. And then once you got that, since all these since the the like it's it's world position not uh uv based uh you can just make a particle system with billboards and spawn a bunch of them on the surface of a mesh and jitter them around a little bit and as they rotate around they maintain like it looks it still looks like a 3d object because as they turn, their world position of the pixels is changing. And this is modeling like a conceptual uh, noise space, right? So like the, the 
three D structure here exists like conceptually in the material, and um, and that's why when we move it, like you're actually traveling through the noise based on the world coordinates of all the pixels, and that gives you like a lot of like a lot of like cool randomization possibilities, right? Because like no matter where you put this, is always going to be a different, slightly different nebula. But I think you could use this for a lot of things. I'm just right, like the 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 combination of um, noise plus distorting the UV sampling of that noise is something I saw in a 2D noise tutorial. And I was like, ooh, I remember when I was trying to do that. I could not get it to look good because like the 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 resolution of the underlying noise of the 3D noise is really bad. But the resolution of the 2D noise is good. And so you use the 2D noise to push around the 3D noise. And you end up with this kind of stuff. Uh, if that makes sense. And this is just on a lumpy donut right now. But like as an example, I could take the uh, instance here. And you see these turbulence nodes, right? So this is the scale offset. So the, the, the smaller this number is, the bigger the turbulence pattern is. Right now, I think this is like 400. So you see as I cut down on the turbulence, you start to see more of the underlying uh, geometry of the actual 3D noise. Right, so if you want like lumpier, fluffier clouds, you go with a lower number. If you want like more distorted texture, you go with a higher number. And you, I mean, like you can take it to, to ridiculous, like unusable margins where it loops back around, but um, that's how that works, right? So like uh, point four, some nice like fluffy, lumpy clouds. And then this is how much strength is it going to apply to like how how much are you going to bias the pixels that are being sampled uh, based on the turbulence pattern. So like if you go higher here, it will be more closer to the 2D turbulence pattern. If you go lower, it'll be closer to the underlying noise pattern, which is where you're getting your colors and such from. But it's cool. It's nice and customizable. You can get lots of different effects out of it, um, which is what I'm working on. I want to make like a module that will just build me randomized nebulas. So like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to save. That's fine. So like the particle counts here. So 400. So like you can actually tune this too. So if I do less particles you get less coverage, right, of the of the nebula. I get so I could for instance I could do less particles, but make sure that all the particle sprites are are very large. And uh, you still get a pretty good effect even with a lower number of, of particles. Um yeah, I've, I've been, like, this is the first time I've gotten this to work kind of the way that I wanted it to work. I got the textures kind of yesterday. And then today I've been working on the particle system. So, like, 10. No, there's not enough luminosity with 10. 30. Now you can make it as sparse or as dense as you want it. I feel like the sweet spot's kind of like 300 or so usually. And it's not actually that expensive. Um, from like, like, it's more expensive than a lot of things you would do, but for this kind of volumetric, it's not actually that um, taxing. So like here it is in, in like gameplay mode.
but yeah you guys uh <laughs> you showed up right when i was about to log off um this is i have to do more research now i have to figure out how to make procedural meshes because right now i have this on a static donut mesh but i want to be able to um have random underlying meshes to apply the particle system to as well as the fact that like this in and of itself is procedurally generated but anyway uh, I'm gonna end it here. I can't really progress further till I understand how I'm supposed to begin to approach generating meshes dynamically. Yeah, it's all good. I uh, like these are not formal streams for like <laughs> I don't know why anybody watches me. I'm not trying to be entertaining or anything. I just sit here and kind of say hmm and hum for four hours while I'm fucking around with materials. Uh, there we go. All right, that's it for me for now. Um, I'll probably be back a little bit later after I do some research. I'm gonna grab a drink too. Some, some booze for the weekend. <laughs>